so happy I have YouTube to distract me from raw. Oh, hello folks. I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. You guys can tell I'm getting a little scruffy here. Well, ah, that haircut's still so nice. So it's weird, I have more hair on my face than I do on the top of my head. Never made sense. Do I have that weird? Uh, at least I don't have the reverse tan. That's good. I'd like to welcome everyone for I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I guess that girlfriend wasn't working. So, oh well. It's time to continue on with my search. Jasmine Dukes. I'm single. But, um... Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. I'm going to make the show as quick as I can. All I, all I can really say is it was a very long three hours. Uh, it starts off uh, with Drew McIntyre promo, uh, Randy Orton, uh, followed by Randy Orton and, and uh, Ric Flair recap. And then Retribution! Oh no! Please don't hurt Kevin Dunn! Please! We we won't get botchy stuff any... Oh wait. Maybe you should should hit Kevin Dunn some more. Oh well. Uh, then you have the Hurt Business come out and and they call it retribution. They're like, no, don't be a bunch of losers. If you come out and hurt someone, hurt them right in the open. Don't go after them in the shadows. You guys are a bunch of losers. And he and they want to know who 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 who. At least someone in the crowd tried the Who chant, so I can give him some credit for that. Paul Cruz comes out and says, yeah, you know what? If I beat your guy, Shelton Benjamin, the rest of you guys are banned MVP from our match. So Paul, so first match was Apollo Cruz versus Shelton Benjamin. All these wrestling matches, with the exception of the Asuka, Shayna Baszler versus... Banks and Bailey was really way too short. I appreciate that the fact that they're trying to put more on. More does not equal better, though. Better quality, longer matches. Better quality, longer matches equals better. Good short less than five minute segments equals better not multiple seven minute segments and matches i don't know uh, but paul cruz and shelton benjamin um shelton benjamin's so strong he, he's pretty vicious again something he probably picked up in new japan um uh, and it was pretty strike heavy for a while paul cruz tried to get some offense in he At one time, Sheldon Benjamin got caught into the power into the toss power bomb. He reversed that to a DDT. That was pretty cool. And, and then we have these ninjas show up, chasing our truth around. Yeah, not good. And then it was like some quick, like Apollo Cruz did some quick flip and a really quick pin. I don't even think there was a finisher involved or even a signature move with that. And that was it. Yeah, it was actually like a somersault flip pin. It was not that, but it's more. I think it's more like like an alligator. It's more like a clutch pin. It was weird. It came out of nowhere. The match whole match was a ham sandwich. Then let the beat down begin. Oh, that was that was good. Then Ali, Cedric, uh, Musaf Ali, Cedric Alexander, and Ricochet make the save. Um, Shelton was outside the ring. <laughs> he was so upset he saw R Truth running around. KO'd R Truth. Shelton Benjamin's now 24 7 champion again. And then he had to make it. Then eventually Apollo Cruz got challenged for his match. He has to find two friends to face the Hurt Business. What two friends will Apollo Crews choose? Then we have Angel Garza and the Bachelorette. And then Ivar was also hitting on the Bachelorette. Angel Garza gave her a rose. Impressive. 
I ever gave her a turkey leg. I don't know if I'd be impressed by that. And then when Angel Garza smacked the turkey leg onto the ground, Ivar picked it up and gave it back to her. I don't know if I would eat anything off the ground there from the performance center. There's a reason why those wrestlers wipe their boots on the outside of the ring. But, yeah, weird stuff. And then it was a uh, Ivar versus Angel Garza was next. Um, Ivar sent, sent Angel Garza right to the corner to start off with. You know this was going to be a very short match because Ivar still had a shirt on. And Garza had his pants on really for like half the match. And Garza does not creatively take off his pants besides to throw them at someone. You know this is going to be a stinker of a match. And it kind of was. Um, again, Ivar got pulled down by his beard. The beard is a liability. That's why Vikings had it. They say, you know what, I'll fight you even though I have full facial hair. Whereas Romans, they would shave. Again, it's barbarism. And you can tell them nice and clean. Nice and tight up here. So that's always good. Uh, then I tell you what, Ivar has an amazing Northern Lights suplex. I do appreciate that. He had the sense on nearly crush poor Angel Garza. Um, except for Angel Garza looked like he was going to die because Ivar was going to jump on him outside of the ring. Uh, Zelina Vega gets in the way. Angel Garza gets a cheap shot and then like a basement drop kick. I think. Jeez. I want to say Coco Beware was the last person to have a drop kick. And that was like a top rope flying drop kick. Among other moves that he used as a finisher. Dropkick is so common now. I think... Oh, what's his face had it? Um, English Bloom Pants guy. They, they, they released him. Now I forget what his name is. Though. Oh, Jack... Uh, Gentleman Jack Gallagher. He used a dropkick, but at least he did that into the corner, which kind of made sense. After, like, some, like, out of nowhere... Head whip, head, head, neck whip, head butt. But Angel Garza wins, and wow, this was uninspiring. And then Samoa Joe said that he had video of Angel Garza and Zelina Vega. I'm like, what kind of video could this be? Ooh, maybe <laughs> half of which when I was in Discord. Well, this match was a ham sandwich. Like half of Discord said, we wish it was the Angel Garza sniffing, <laughs> sniffing Selena Vega's panties or something. Something like stupid, like like Angel Garza trying on women's clothes. Um, him and Char uh, him and uh, Charlie awkwardly making out with someone else. Just something weird. Um, Dawkins has a videotape. We saw it, and it's. it's it's that terrible quality video for some reason, because well, Dawkins was was the Bosch was was the the bachelorette, bachelorette. Charlie Cruz shows up and of course a brawl ensues. Then I'll tell you what this was. Also a pretty wow. They went downhill from wait. Oh yeah, um, Sheldon Benjamin of course KO'd our truth. That's that was such a toss away thing. It's just a. So at least it wasn't a roll-up. So it's a can of soup. So I'll put that in my notes where I just reverse order. I'll mention that there before we go on. Because this next match, Mickey James versus Natalia, they don't they didn't even give them proper ring entrances. It was weird. They like cut right to ringside. Um Mickey James, uh, Luthes, Preston Tyler, really to start off. They some really weird work clothesline where Tyler went for the the discus forearm, and James went for a clothesline. They took each other down. 
Then Seth sh showed up, and the guy on the cameraman on the floor, who obviously Kevin Dunn was injured, because Kevin Dunn could not switch views. So it was just the camera guy on the floor showing the video, because Seth Rollins showed up and started to yap at Joe. And of course, Joe being Samoa Joe, was going to yap back at Seth. And the cameraman said, ooh, this could be exciting. It was more exciting that was than what was going in the ring. Cameraman, do your job. This is Mickey James we're talking about. Something could slip out. But yeah, it was so like some weird distraction. Even Lana's like turning around, then she's trying to get like um TikTok videos. I thought that was copyright infringement. When I try to do that to WWE, that's copyright infringement. She she should be have a copyright violation for YouTube for posting unauthorized videos. Yeah. She should be banned for 90 days. Um, then there was a power... The only thing we saw is that Mickey James reversed a powerbomb attempt into a Huracrana. Then he knocks off Mickey James on, out of the ring. I think Mickey James forgot the 10 count because that ref gave her a really long 9 and... Eight, nine, and ten count. But Natalia won by count out. And that distraction killed this match. This was another can of soup. Do you see a theme going on here? And then we have Sasha Banks and Bailey. They come out, cut a quick promo. Uh, Shayna Baszler shows up, and she's joined by her tag team partner, Asuka. That would be an interesting tag team combination. I don't think it's going to happen. It would be like the bar, though. A female version of the bar would be pretty good. That or Shayna Baszler, Jasmine Dukes, and Marina Shafira. Do some do some freebird rule for the tag team belts. That might be interesting, and at least Shayna could carry them to a match. Um, well, this match again it was Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Shayna Baszler and Asuka. Asuka, she got trapped into the wrong corner. Uh, although Asuka did eventually hit Code Breaker, then Nia Jax came out, and she physically attacked. Shayna Baszler, which did not result in disqualification. D don't don't referees understand rules? Sasha Banks and Bailey should have been disqualified the second Nia Jax put hands on Shayna Baszler, because Nia Jax like destroys a plexiglass. And why is this not a countout? I I gave credit to WWE officials once. Now I think now I think they, they've seen way too much AEW. Impact officials are the best officials. But the best are actually the New Japan Pro Wrestling officials. Red Shoes. Red Shoes is best. New Japan officials. Num number one in my book. Red Shoes. Number one. Official. Even above Ref Jess. Mike Kyuta. Aubrey's down there. Aubrey likes too much of the attention for herself. But with that, Asuka, for the, um, right before the break, Asuka has a double hip attack, knocks Sasha Banks and Bailey off the apron. There's no Kyrie saying no, no Shayna Baszler. Um, Bailey is now becoming the master of the rest hold. That's not good. Um, then they do a pickup backdrop onto, like a swinging backdrop. To Asuka. That was actually pretty neat to see. Uh, Bailey then, then eats a big boot. Asuka gets the bank statement. And then Shayna Baszler's back. Where'd she go anyway? I guess she went brawling off with Nia Jax, but you never really saw that. Again, maybe they maybe they do need Kevin Dunn in production. Uh, so Shayna broke up that. Uh, she gets a hot tag. 
just tosses elbows and knees. And oh, she has to be careful around Sasha Bank with those elbows and knees. Sasha doesn't necessarily know how to take those all the time. Um, they hit a backstabber to a bailing to belly onto Shayna, but Shayna kicked out. Shayna's strong. That's good to see. I actually didn't meet Shayna Baszler once. She's actually kind of cute, and she, she's actually really quiet and soft-spoken, which is odd. Um, I think my nephews were like more in shock than I was. I, I was kind of in shock. I'm like, hey, yeah, 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 get her autograph. She's gonna be famous one day. It's like, wow, it's good to see you here. It's like, yeah. She, she's like, ah, she, she's like, oh, oh, I see. It's like, course, my nephew was there, and he didn't know what to say. I'm like, dude, say something. It's like she's not gonna hit you yet. She's like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hit, I don't hit people unless they deserve it. She was, hey, she was really cool. What can I say? So my nephew's got that, got that moment with her. That was, that was good to see. I should got a picture of her. Add that to the collection. Although. Oh, wrong way. Because there is the wall of wrestling signatures. Which actually might be, now that I, every so often I look at it, and every so often, because of all, all, all this plague talk, those might be worth something one day. Because they might not do that anymore. That's a, that's a relic of the past, folks. Oh, right back there. At one time you could, now you can't. But, um, yeah, then she did that gut wrench, tilt a whirl, gut buster. That was pretty cool. Then the big knee put the clutch in on the outside. Asuka put Sasha Banks in the Asuka lock. Both heels tap. Shannon Baszler and Asuka win, but don't necessarily look super strong doing it. They won, but they didn't. I mean, they tapped out. But yeah, they look good though. So it'll be interesting when prediction time comes around because normally the math is pretty good. They won. They didn't necessarily stand tall though. So that'll be interesting. I'll tell you what, this probably might have been the best match of the night. This was a cheeseburger match. Then there was a recap of the contract signing between Seth Rollins and Dominic Mysterio. Um, then backstage, there was Drew and Shawn Michaels starting to talk. And then a little thing there was the Riot Squad and the Iconics face off. Billy Kay needs to lay off that cheek bronzer. Listen, her whole body looked tan. Her cheeks literally look like, like metal now. She needs to lay off that, or the lighting's different in the performance center. And I'll tell you what, people might get upset for me saying this, but Peyton Royce is too tiny. I know she was in a bodybuilding competition recently, and placed second, if, if what I heard is correct. So again, bravo to you, Peyton Royce. You look freaking tiny, though. She, I don't know. She's getting to that Britt Baker super tiny, like, like not even bubbly, cute, tiny. She's just like, you're, you're too skinny. Like, I can appreciate a woman's musculature. I don't necessarily like it. But if I, if I can see the woman's abs and they're kind of well-defined and they fit her body type, hey, good for her. She's probably a pro wrestler, bodybuilder, or, or, or something in the fitness industry. Power to her. The reason why you can see Peyton Royce's abs as well as Britt Baker's abs because there's no fat there. That's not good. Billy Kay has a little bit of a tummy. But, oh, Nikki Cross's tummy is best tummy. I mean, it, it just, Nikki Cross just, even though she, well, she is only 4 foot 11. But, Nikki Cross looks like a natural average woman. Does that make sense? P 
Peyton Roy Billy Kay still looks amazing. She just has to take makeup off her face, and Billy Kay would be utterly amazing. Peyton Royce is too skinny, though. And hey, Sean Spears likes that. I don't. I want to hear your opinion, YouTube audience. And I might put that in the title, too. Stir up some controversy. Um, again, Liv Morgan's a about right, she's not super skinny anymore. She's a little tummy, a little hip. Perfectly fine. Again, live again. Ruby Riot, little little tummy there going. Little 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 muffin top. I like that. And then you see Jasmine Duke, um, Marina Shafira, and Shayna Baszler talking backstage. Wow, I have a lot of notes for this line. Again, too, too, too much stuff going on in the show. Because then we have the Retribution recap. And then we have Peyton Royce versus Ruby Riot. Uh, Ruby Riot hits really a start off, start off the match with standing STO. <laughs> she tries to kill poor Peyton Royce. She just whips her, boom, against the apron, and then whap against the barricade. Um, eventually, Peyton re re uh, reverses the wand. Uh, get, get, get back in the ring. Oh, that knee by Peyton Royce. There's not much fat protecting that knee, though. Uh, goes to the outside to recover a little bit. Ruby hits her with a flying cross body. Great to see. And Ruby, she just looks like a woman. If that makes sense. Um, but what happened, though, is that Billy Kay started to creep on by. Uh, she started to, to to give Liv Morgan the business. Uh, Ruby Ryan went to back up Liv, but she got shoved behind by Peyton Royce. Um, Liv is confused. Ruby's kind of shocked a little bit. Gets back into the ring. Again, a little bit disoriented. Ruby Wright was. She hit that tw like twisting neck breaker. I forget what she calls it. It used to be like a twisting fisherman suplex. Except for this was more sideways. This was more perpendicular. Not so much parallel. Uh, Peyton Royce picks up the win. Really short match, though. What's that ham sandwich? And Billy Kay, honestly, no matter what's wrong with her makeup, she is still probably one of the best talkers. She's getting on like Kevin Owens level of talking, though. Her makeup, not so much. Her talking ability is right there, though. Then it's finally 10 o'clock, and that means we get to go to Raw Underground. Um, starts off with... Eric beats up some guy. I don't know. It didn't take long. It just like pounds him. Then Dolph versus Eric. This was actually pretty good. I was shocked. The thing they do need to do in Raw Underground is someone has to, someone has to bleed, baby. If you're going to get hit with a bare fist. Well, this match really didn't have a lot of striking in it. Um, Dolph, again, great collegiate wrestling. Goes for a single leg. Um, kind of a switch. Afterwards, to get the back on Eric. Um, Eric just slams him, though. Uh, Eric does some great dirty boxing. Gets the knees in, the dirty boxing. Um, Dolph, however, goes for the single leg, gets behind. Goes for the sleeper hold. Uh, the thumb to the eye. Wait, that's not, that's not legal in MMA. What is this garbage? But yeah, it doesn't matter. I guess anything goes. Beard pulling, hair pulling. Thumbs to the eyes. I mean, next you'll see biting or something. So I'll tell you what, Dolph wants, because he actually put Eric to sleep, which was which is good. I'll give this a, actually a ham sandwich. And then we have the Dominic and Rey Mysterio moment. Seth and Murphy show up. Then we have do wielding kendo sticks. Yeah, that's what you expect it to be. Back in the underground, you have 
Rua versus Riddick Moss. This is where like the hair pulling came in. It's like, eh. but the end. This was good though. They were striking. You see Rua definitely with a, a mixed martial art Brazilian jiu jitsu background. Riddick Moss more of the striker catch less, catch wrestling style. If they give this like fifteen minutes, have a little blood. Oh. This would actually be more an inner. This match, if they uh, if they gave him like 10, like 10, 15 minutes, incorporated a little color into it, and they could do it so easily because it could be so believable. Even if it's like a blood capsule and, and, and just bites it and smears it over a cheek or something, you could really get away with this feeling almost legitimate. Um, they fight into the crowd. I guess you get counted if you go into the crowd. You're allowed to fight for a while, but then Shane McMahon says, "Okay, that's enough." This probably was the most convincing MMA wrestling fight work that I've seen in a while. And and I say work because Ken Shamrock, like like legitimately like took out like like killed someone. We saw that. We're like, oh dude, Ken Shamrock did not pull that knee. He like literally knocked him the hell out. That guy either said the wrong thing, or did the wrong thing because Ken Shamrock just just knocked him out. And you can tell like a true knockout because the guy the guy literally will go stiff. And. Either you either go stiff or you just collapse. And when you collapse, generally nine times out of ten if you're KO'd, like you just like fall like a sack of potatoes. Your whole legs are at weird angles. You just forget everything. And falling down from being KO'd probably hurts more than, than a true work a shoot KO. It's just so much more uglier looking on the way down than a work KO. So this was probably the most entertaining match so far. Rua, you did a good job. I don't know, you're not up there, but that's okay. This was another ham sandwich. Then we had the six-man tag elimination. It was Ricochet, Mustafa Ali, and Apollo Crews taking on the, the Hurt Business. And wow! Did Mustafa Ali ever get eliminated so quickly? And then Shelton comes in, and Ricochet comes in. Shelton nails Ricochet, and Ricochet's out. I'm like, oh no, Apollo Crews is going to do his three-on-one reverse comeback. Guess what happened? This is why no one likes WWE, because it's way too predictable. But now it's a one-on-three very quickly. Uh, Cruz gets a toss power bomb onto Shelton Benjamin. He's upset. Uh, MVP's in the ring. Shelton Benjamin goes outside the ring. He's still kind of a little dazed. Uh, Cedric nails him. Cedric pins Shelton for the 24 7 championship. Impressive. Um, that in itself, again, because at least he's using a wrestling move, not a roll up. Um, Cedric Alexander winning the 24 7 belt. I'll give a ham sandwich too. And while that happened, of course, the match went on. Um, let's see here. Cruz beat up, La beat up Lashley, a little MVP. Lashley MVP came in, uh, starts beating up Paul Cruz. Lashley tags in. Um, MVP. So Lashley works him over. MVP gets tagged in. He gets tagged back in. MVP misses a big boot, but eats a toss power bomb. Uh, Lashley then just runs in and like steamrolls Cruz. Cruz has two insigurias, which is great, and a standing moonsault. Bobby Lashley kicks out of those like it was nothing. And then Bobby Lashley, I think, went for a dominator that was reversed. Uh, Cruz could not do whatever he wanted. And then, ouch! I'll tell you what. 
the, the, the two best spears right now, Bobby Lashley and Moose. Bobby Lashley has a spear. It just looks like it hurts. Either that or people really sell it. Because that was so good to see. Um, yeah, so Ash, so that, Apollo Crews wins. He gets his one on three comeback victory. It was good. A little quick, but still, it was fine. It's was, it was, it was a cheeseburger match. Again, Bobby Lashley just seems to add something to the match. I mean, his moves seem so legit. They they seem so... He's probably a really safe worker. It just looks really stiff. And there's a difference between working stiff and looking stiff. Bobby Lashley just looks stiff when he does something. Like, like that's spearless. I, I'm so, I would be so afraid to eat a Bobby Lashley spear. Although I'm sure he guides you through it and, and kind of puts your body in the right position where you really have to screw something up. It just looks so snug though. And then we had Tozawa versus Cedric Alexander for the 24-7 championship. I like the fact that they had this in a classic wrestling match for the 24-7 belt. However, Tozawa tried summoning Jutsu. And when he did, it was only the ninjas that he brought ringside that tried to interfere and that did not take long for Cedric to dispatch of. Uh, I thought Tozawa at one time I thought was going to do Tozawa. I'll say what he is an amazing senton. He literally gets up there. He jumps up first. He jumps up first and then positions his body where I swear it looks like he falls 15 feet onto his back. Whereas I was watching uh, older clips of Mr. Nevada. And and when and when he did his sent on, it just looks it just looks like he did like this. He just went up, oh, kicked my feet underneath, flop. Tazawa does when Tazawa does it, he like leaps up, gets his body in position in the air, and does it. It's truly amazing looking though. Um Tazawa eventually Oh um I'm sorry, Cedric hits the uh, springboard in Seguri. Then the lumbar check. I almost forgot what that move was. I'm like, is that a lumbar? No, that's a lumbar check. It's so weird when you haven't seen some of these movesets in a while. You're like, I forget what that's called. It's a lumbar check. So that was good. That was, this was a good ham sandwich of a match. And then... Uh, Sheldon Benjamin runs in just those clocks. Cedric Alexander, he gets the belt back. Again, again, it's not terrible. Way too many times this belt changes hands, though, like in one show. And this one... Actually, I can't see the revenge... Fa I can't actually see the revenge factor by Shelton Benjamin. So this makes sense. So I'll actually bump it up. It's a ham sandwich of a showing. Then we go back to Raw Underground. We get Shafir is there versus some former dancer. All I saw was a judo arm throw. Uh, the back kick. To a front triangle. And yeah, that was pretty quick. Um, impressive though. Very much a jujitsu style fight. So, I, so at least if you're going to punch someone in the face repeatedly... You have to turn them into to, to, uh, tomato can. You, I can see where WWE doesn't want the women turning each other into into busted open tomato cans. So I can see just straight judo, like like jujitsu, body blows. So so it kind of worked. Um, again, it was some one of the former dancers. It was some some. Ah, it could have been someone off the street, as far as I know, because I don't remember. I'm sure. Someone in NXT has like long, straight red hair, but nothing is sticking out for, for me because Santana Garrett left. And I 
don't think she had red hair. So, yep. I don't know. They pulled someone off the street to, to do the job to Marina Shafira. Again, this is kind of good. Way too quick for my liking. It's a ham sandwich. And then Shannon Baszler wants to fight Nia Jax. They get in the ring. Um, they kind of pose a lot. Nia does a lot of trash talk. And then she runs. And on her way out, she just like kicks Marie Shafira in the back. In the back of the head. Wow. That's not going to get her any brownie points. I don't know. That, that whole thing was a piece of toast. The only reason why it was a piece of toast, she left. If you're going to pick a fight, at least stay there for the fight. Or, like, if you do get pounded, just, like, tap out. Say, say, uncle. Kumite. Mate. Whatever. Just give up then. At least, tr if you're going to get in the ring, I mean, you might as well at least try. Just not run. And now, if she didn't get in the ring, that's a whole, whole other topic. But she stepped in the ring willingly then. Not looking too good for Nia Jax there in the WWE. Then we had kind of our last match. We had Andrade taking on... Oh, what's his face forward? Angela Dawkins. Martel Ford? I feel that's the first name. I, I can finally figure which one's which, which is good. Uh, it's a classic match. I like this. It starts off, headlock start, pretty good. Uh, Montez, Montez Ford. Uh oh, not Martel, Montez Ford. Again, he, he does the sea of clothesline, the standing moonsault. He begins to warrior up. <sighs> um, however, he gets distracted. Selena Vega jumps on the ring. I have no idea how Zelina Vega walks in those freaking ridiculously high-heeled shoes. They have to be... Because they're platform shoes. They have to be like nine-inch heels. And you can literally see where the sole of... They look like big stripper boots. I have no... And I have yet to figure out... Well, well I can see certain heel styles. If it's like the wider... Big square chunky heel. I can see that because that at least gives you some support. How you how people balance on like stiletto nine inch heels is beyond me. Much less jump in and out of a wrestling ring with them on, and jump off. Although jumping off, I guess you're on your toes, so it's probably not that bad. But it just looks so. It just looks like a twisted ankle waiting to happen. Um. So Vega tried to. Distract Montez Ford. She saw Bianca Belair. She tried to cross body her. No, nope, Bianca's too strong. Caught her, slammed her somewhere. This was enough to distract, to distract Andrade. And Andrade gets pinned by Montez Ford. Mm. I don't know. This match was a ham sandwich. By this point in the show, I just said, "Geez, when is this over?" When when is my when is my due diligence done with? And then Shawn Michaels gets in the room, gets gets in the ring, cuts a promo. Randy Orton punts him, uh, knocks him down. Shawn Michaels gets punted for his efforts. Um, Drew McIntyre came in, chased off Orton, beat him up a little bit on the outside. However, once Drew went to attend to Shawn Michaels, Orton being the sneaky person he is, came in the ring, RKO'd him. Probably the right way the show should have ended. That was Raw. And wow, Raw is getting long. I am so happy. I only have a two-hour live stream show tomorrow to do for Impact Wrestling. Oh, and as far as the rest of the week goes. So, folks, this is gonna this is a weird week. So, again, this will be posted probably Tuesday morning. I'm doing this show here um, well, Monday night, Tuesday morning. Um, tomorrow, vote. Go out and vote tomorrow. 
because I will too. Then I'll be back to do my live stream for Impact Wrestling. Wednesday, there's no AEW, so instead, I work the races, so you're going to see some racing videos. You're going to see, you're, you get to see what I see for the racing videos. And, and some of it's good, some of it's business as usual, some of it's, 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 it's how do they dress like that. So you'll see what I mean on Wednesday, and I'll put that up, because Wednesday I'm also off to Jacksonville, so, so that's a quick fix for that. Because... Thursday is going to be predictions. I, I don't know who's going to be here. I hope no one hope no one breaks in and and does stuff. Or maybe maybe I'll just have El Vagabundo come out of the word work. Or see if he's in some cantina somewhere. Or watering hole. Maybe he's at the cabbage patch still. Who knows? Friday is a normal smackdown. Saturday is going to be interesting because Saturday initially was supposed to be Triple Mania. They postponed that. Oh, news! I think Triple Mania is going to be October 11th. So that's a couple months from now. So this whole Corona thing should be done by then. So October 11th, because I think the 10th. They're having one special, like the prelude to Triple Mania, uh, Regina Dos. I forget what that is. All I know is that I saw October 10th and October 11th possible Triple Mania dates. And I'll be there because that's, well, viewership for me. Well, that's also one of the best events around. And Tri AAA doesn't care about copyright stuff. They don't follow copyright laws anyway. They can't ban you for copyright violation because they could be sued out the wazooie for their own copyright violation. Um, so Saturday, there's no Triple Mania. I think the AEW Dynamite show starts at 6. But I'm at work. Now the odd thing is... Takeover starts, I think it's seven, so I'll miss a little bit of that. But I'd rather cover most of Takeover and just say to fudge with AEW. Sunday's SummerSlam, I'm probably working, so I'll be able to cover a chunk of it at least. I don't know how long that show's going to go. Then next week's a normal week. Yeah. And that's how things are going to go. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned for my racing video. You're going to see what it's like to actually work these races. It's a little bit different perspective. And wow, did I lose somehow. You know, I was pretty close, I think. I said I lost 10 pounds of water weight. I know I lost 5 pounds. I lost, yeah, but I lost 4 pounds. Since Friday, Saturday I ate and went to work. Sunday, I worked, sweat off 10 pounds of